Whether you're stretching to it or from it, connecting to a fire hydrant is essential in assuring a continuous water supply. Let's examine the procedures for connecting large diameter hose to the hydrant. There are many different styles and types of fire hydrants. Although they may look different, they are similar in the fact that they allow firefighters to access water mains below ground. Color coding these devices can indicate the size water main they connect and the gallons per minute they supply. Assigning the task of taking the hydrant should not be given at the spur of the moment. This duty should be designated by seat assignment or at the roll call. This helps eliminate confusion and indecision on the fire ground. It also promotes safety and accountability. In addition, this method allows the designated member to customize the position of the first folds of hose and coupling. Follow your department's procedures for storing and arranging the proper hydrant tools. It's a good idea to keep the necessary equipment in the rear compartment. This will keep a member from stepping out from the profile of the apparatus and into potential traffic. When stretching in before the fire, position the apparatus just past the hydrant. This will allow the hydrant firefighter to pull the connection end of the hose line and an additional fold straight out of the hose bed. Pulling an additional fold supplies the firefighter with adequate line to avert obstacles and reach the hydrant. The additional line also allows the hose to be curved efficiently, reducing kinks that adversely affect water flow. Stopping too short, in effect, turns the apparatus into an obstruction. Once the line is in position, wrapped around the hydrant, the firefighter signals the officer, who then makes the decision to proceed. As the engine lays out the hose, it is important that the hydrant firefighter remains clear of the line. Never straddle a hose. Should the line snag or become entangled, it could pull free and whip violently off the hydrant. Once the apparatus stops at its point of operation, the hydrant firefighter can then proceed with the connection. It's a fact. Most hydrants haven't been used in years. This means their caps and connections could be rusted and painted over, and difficult to remove. Placing a hydrant wrench on a frozen cap and hastily pulling the tool could result in serious injury. Here's a tip to use when opening the hydrant. Remember the mnemonic. School starts at 9 and ends at 3. Start by placing the wrench on the cap at the 9 o'clock position. This allows the firefighter to use their weight to push down on the tool and break the connection. End by tightening and securing the cap. Place the wrench in the 3 o'clock position and push down to apply force. Some departments use cheater bars to help their members gain additional mechanical advantage. Always remove the large steamer cap first as this provides the maximum access to view the hydrant's interior. Once the cap is removed, look into the opening. The barrel should be dry and free of debris. If it's not, inform the officer the hydrant may be out of service. If there is garbage in the barrel, it must be removed. Never reach into a hydrant with bare hands. Use a tool and gloved hand to carefully extract any large obstructions. To clear smaller waste from the barrel, open the hydrant slowly. The force of the water will lift the trash up the barrel and out of the steamer opening. Opening a hydrant quickly may trap garbage at the top of the barrel, keeping it from being expelled. In order to test the operational performance of a fire hydrant, first, warn others in the immediate area. Then remove the steamer cap and make an examination. Next, take a position behind the hydrant. Don't stand in front of the caps or openings. Now with the wrench in front of you, push in a counterclockwise direction to open the hydrant. Lefty Lucy. 
Turn the stem slowly. The water should gradually move up the barrel. This will help clear the hydrant of debris. Now, turn the stem until it is fully opened. The discharge force should be noticeably greater. If it isn't, notify your officer. Once the decision has been made to use the hydrant, continue by attaching the hose and tightening down the remaining caps. Righty tighty. Remember, some departments have the practice of placing a gate valve on one or both of the discharge openings. This allows an additional line to be used without shutting down the flow. Entry one to hydrant, wet the line. Never wet the line without consent of the pump operator. 10-4. Use hand signals, direct voice contact, or your portable radio to obtain permission. Now that we are ready to wet the line, remember, open the hydrant all the way. A hydrant has two positions, fully opened or fully closed. There is no in-between. Upon conclusion of the operation, shut down the hydrant and remove the hose line. Don't be in a hurry to replace the caps. Give the hydrant a chance to drain. This could take a few minutes. Pack your hose, then come back and examine the inside of the hydrant. It should be dry. If it isn't, pump out the remaining water and notify your local water authority for inspection and service. Establishing a positive water supply is an essential step in the fire attack procedure. Assuring the supply prior to commencing an attack increases your member's safety by reducing the chances of the line going dry. Only with an adequate amount of water can extinguishment be expected. A working hydrant supplies the lifeblood for our firefighters. Thanks for watching.